This is a poster board with uh, many dozens of brachiopods spread out on it. And uh, we go out and pick out all the little tiny uh, seashells out of the cliff sides. And being a fossil hunter is very much like uh, being a beachcomber. We're going through and picking out all these ancient fossilized marine creatures. And uh, this is a result of some of our uh, combing the ancient rock seabeds. And, um, easily you can come away with this many even on one field trip if you go to a good location you spend enough time. They're not hard, they're extremely abundant. Um, start off with some of the smallest ones to begin with. This is Zygospira. We are spoiled in Cincinnati, Ohio. We find all type. We call the keepers, the ones that we keep and take home, whole fossils. In other parts of the world people are very happy just to find fragments of fossils. With marine fossils, invertebrate uh, sea life, um, they're often found whole if you uh, look enough. These are the tiniest of all brachiopods, only the size of a BB, and they're found loose and free from the matrix or within the rocks, as I've shown earlier. Zygospira. All these fossils, all these brachiopods, 35 different species in uh, the Cincinnati and Rock series, and almost all of them, without exception, are named, uh, given Latin names. Here it is in the palm of my hand for uh, size comparison. This is a really neat little cemented fragment of some. So the matrix is bonding these together and there's also two little snail shells. Just a beautiful, beautiful little uh, collection of tiny fossils. We'll do snails in another video. Okay. In contrast, here's the largest brachiopod, Raphnosquina. Platystrophia ponderosa, some of the larger platystrophias. Hebertella. Zone colony growing on it. Another clams in, mixed in there. Don't get your clams mixed in with your brachiopods. You tell the difference. Teardrop shaped usually, not symmetrical. Platystrophia ponderosa, very big, very big brachiopods. Oh no, that's Herbertella. What am I saying? Here's Platystrophia ponderosa. Very big. Almost golf ball size. Fossils, fossils, fossils. What do you do with them all?
Okay, this rock has a lot of uh, platystrophia within it. Some of them are a little bit distorted. They were compressed and compacted before they fossilized, meaning the shells are all actually crushed in a little bit from the pressure of the sediments pushing in on them prior to them fossilizing. And um, what's unique about this one here, there's not many on the surface, but it broke through. You can see the hollow openings. And look at the big big crystals. Look at the big crystal formation inside this one. You're seeing into the hollow. Looks like a cave. This was the depression inside of a brachiopod. I don't know if you can see see that uh, crystal. There's another empty one there. Here are domed bryozoans. And why I'm showing this in a brachiopod video is that this is a brachiopod that has been totally enveloped, covered up, and the bryozoan is growing right on top of it. You can see the shape. Do you recognize the shape? It's the exact same outline as the Raphna squina. And to prove it to you, you can see part of the shell just right there sticking out. This one on the other hand is a clam that has been grown over. You can barely see the outline, but this is an elongated clam shell. The point being is that um, these seashells were homes and anchors to many other animals that attached themselves to, uh, to them. One of the most sought after of all animals that attach themselves to these seashell brachiopods are edrioasteroids, which means seeded starfish, seeded sea stars. These ones are not very good ones that I'm showing you right here. It's kind of hard to make out, but I'll explain what an edrioasteroid is on other videos. In this one little rock, there might be maybe 40 different seashells. And there's some more on the back if I were to clean it up. Um, and this big rock here, it's maybe a foot and a half across by, I don't know, 15 inches wide. And it has literally over a thousand, there's easily several hundred of these little seashells just crammed into this top surface. And even in the middle throughout this rock. I'm going to show you the wet version now to bring out the color contrast. Oh, look at the detail in the bryzo in there. There's a birthday party going by nearby, that's why you hear all the children's voices. Some of these are broken up. They have a history. There's a Dalmanilla mixed in with it, but mostly, predominantly, they are a Theridonta. Depending on what, what fossil formation because Theridonta and Sour Bell are so identical, you have to uh, know what formation you're collecting and to positively identify them.